Mir from the Hockenheim Ring. Hello, here from the heart of the Mercedes AMG DTM team. This is perhaps the most important race weekend of the year. Oh no, to be honest, it is the most important race weekend of the year. Then uh, today, yeah, before we find the next DTM champion here at the Hockenheim Ring, yeah, we find another champion. We find the champion of the Mercedes-Benz AMG e-racing competition. That's how it is. These are the finals, and here are our drivers. Six best drivers are sim racing competition finalists. We've got 20 minutes of hot rocking race action. Look at these concentrators eyes, look at these guys here, they are already in the free practice. And to be exact, we have three competitions today. The first one is the competition of the six best drivers of the Mercedes-Benz AMG Motorsport e-racing competition. We searched them the whole season long and all, about, all around the world and they are fighting today for the... yeah. World Championship. We are searching the world champion today and the winner can win uh, yeah, a real racetrack training in real life. So this is going to be the first competition. The second one is the uh, competition between the six rookies of the Mercedes-Benz AMG Games World uh, e-racing competition. And they are fighting for a um, DTM car taxi drive here on the Hockenheim ring this weekend. This is something, right? Yeah, and then we have another competition, and this is really interesting because you can see all our uh, six AMG DTM drivers sitting here. Paul Resta here in the front, concentrated. Eduardo, Eduardo Motera there. He's really, uh, yeah, they're all really concentrated and they fight hard because they can win nothing today. They can just fight for their honor. And if we talk about last year, yeah, that was not the best year for them in the e-competition. So good luck to all our race drivers and good luck to all of you guys. And um, the free practice is still running, right, Robert? Yeah. It is. And um, before we start the qualifying, I want to introduce you two guys, our commentators. He is the voice of the DTM. Yeah, we can call him like this. He is Dave Richardson. Applause, please. Oh, that's very kind of you, Tore. I remember this last year, and what a brilliant evening we had. These guys are so talented. I'm not talking about our DTM drivers from Mercedes <laughs> yeah, AMG. Yeah. Clearly, they're talented, but these guys that race simulators are extraordinary. Can I let you into a secret? As we're looking at free practice right now... Okay, tell us. He won Jack Keithley, who lives literally two kilometers from where I live. Clearly, the talent has come from my end of the country. Oh, my God, yeah. It's a talent area where you're from. <laughs> Amazing. So, he's the first commentator. Thank you, Dave. It's going to be a great evening today. It's going to be a great race. And there's the other one. Uh, if you are the race of the DTM, uh, the voice of the DTM, he is the voice of e-racing. Applause, please, for Robert Wiesenmüller. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Oh, man. It's so great to see this here. It's so great to see e-racing on such a big stage. And I'm just looking forward so much to this race here. Can't wait. So when we're going to start the race, how many minutes uh, is the free practice uh, left? 
And we've got about like two minutes left of some free practice session and then we will immediately go into the qualifying session and then we will see who's the fastest. Yeah, and we um, perhaps we get some surprises because we have our rookies here uh, around the um, yeah the professional e racing drivers and the professional uh, race drivers. And do you think there could be a surprise today that they could do something in the championship today? Oh, I mean it's it's always hard to tell. But when I saw the practice times, I could see that Robert Wickens is looking extremely competitive at the moment. He was the fastest out of the DTM drivers, and Robert we've also Wickens. seen Lucas Auer already um, in the season of the e-racing doing a very good job so I think these two are probably the favorites from the real DTM drivers to uh, do a good job here. And from the e-racing drivers what do you think? I think Because you, you, you met all the drivers before the whole year long you did every, um, yeah, every race they did before and who's your favorite? Well Jack Keithley he was the guy who dominated the online season he actually won five races five out of the nine races But on the other hand, there's, for example, Tim Heinemann. And Tim Heinemann won this event last year. He's extremely good under pressure. And he's also extremely good on the Hockenheim ring. So I think these two are the favorites, but who knows? Oh, what's going on there with Lukas Auer? He's uh, smiling. What's wrong with you? So, so let's talk about um, uh, a couple of things. Because if they do one mistake here, it's like in a real race, they're out, right? Yeah, we've got 20 minutes. and. I mean, you need to nail these 20 minutes. You need to do a good job. And if you crash, you crash. It's over. I mean, it's maybe a game, but simulating real racing as closely as possible, race room. And um, so it's like a real DTM race. They've got DRS. They've got uh, realistic physics. They've got a pretty accurate wheel as well in front of them, good simulators. And I think it comes pretty close to the real racing. And I always wonder, like, how good would these e-racers be in a real car? Okay, so are we ready? Yes, we are already in the qualifying session. Okay, then you come. Uh, you do the qualifying now. Let's start. Thank you, Toro. So uh, here we are then into the qualifying session already. And just like in a real DTM race, qualifying is utterly critical. It's utterly crucial. You've got to get it absolutely right. Uh, this, of course, the uh, finale of the uh, Mercedes AMG e-racing competition with uh, race room, just eight minutes. And that clock is going to tick down very, very quickly. Let's go live on board now with Tim Heinemann then. Everything is so realistic. It's like being in my studio and uh, it's the real race. So uh, turning in now, just kissing the apex a little bit. Does so on the exit now. Around the parabolic and then the fastest part of this Hockenheim ring circuit. And you can see uh, the uh, split times on the bottom of the screen. Heading up towards the uh, hairpin now. Heavy braking uh, part of uh, this circuit turn in and of course when it comes to the real race Rob this is going to be a real pinch point isn't it going into that hairpin is one I'm looking forward to I'm sorry to say yeah I think it's uh, especially critical on the first lap when we've got all cars bunched up very close together but also at the same time um, it's a good point for overtaking and on modern racetracks it's sometimes very rare that you find these corners where you can overtake easily but in the Mercedes AMG e-racing competition overtaking You know, it, it was easy. We saw it in every single race, and I hope we can see the same here today. You're absolutely right. As we've watched the series throughout the course of the season, there has been so much overtaking. Uh, but at the moment, there you can see we're on board, and uh, not on board, but we're uh, tracking Tim Heinemann now and keeping the clock on him to give us a uh, respective time, a benchmark time, if you like, uh, for the remaining six and a half minutes of this uh, qualifying session. And uh, a 132 3 And Heinemann crosses now with a 132.055 fastest. Currently, that deserves a cheer, I'm sure. Oh, for crying out, blooming loud. Do you know how hard me and Rob are working up here to try and generate the excitement for this? Six and a quarter minutes, all that's left in qualifying. Now, here is Jack Keatley. Clearly, in my broadcast position, I am totally unbiased, Rob. However, I'd like to see him do well. Yeah, and I think he's proven in the season already that he's really capable of, uh, of doing a great job in these types of cars. Currently in second place, but you can see it's less than a tenth that he is behind Tim Heinemann. And you can also see already on the screen how Keith Lee loses the back end a little bit. The drivers are already fighting very hard in the practice session. Let's actually go to the fastest of the DTM drivers and as we expected, it's Robert Wickens. 
So on board with Rob Wickens now then. Personal best through uh, sector one, but that's not the best of everyone. If it's green, it's a personal best. Heading up towards the hairpin now. Down hard on that brake pedal, turning into the uh, hairpin. Back on the throttle end, giving it everything he can as he heads down towards the Mercedes Arena now. Uh, the best of the uh, DTM drivers then uh, is Robert Wickens, P7 at the moment in this qualifying session, where, may I remind you, there is merely five minutes left. Rob, it goes so blooming quickly. Yeah, they really need to uh, do a perfect lap early on in the session. They're also on only one set of tyres for this qualifying session, so it actually might get really hard now to improve, but it's definitely possible. All right, look at the time from Tim Heinemann, 1 minute 32.055, that is quick. When you look at the margin between P1 and P2, we are talking about three one hundredths. I mean, it is so, so close. Yeah, and Julian Kunze, the guy in third place, he's not so, not so far behind either. And he actually finished in second place last year. He finished second in the online campaign. So I'm sure he wants to do a little bit, he wants to do something different than a second place, but I'm not sure if third is what he imagined. No, maybe not. He'll be hoping for better than that. Well, we've still got four and a half minutes uh, remaining of this uh, qualifying session. And like in uh, DTM for real, of course, the uh, margins between uh, the top drivers is minuscule. On board with Julian Kunzen now. Absolutely flat now. Onto the brakes, turn in, kiss the apex, take a little bit of curb on the exit. Very, very good use of that uh, curb. And again, you can actually feel and hear the rumble strips being used here. Uh, this the... Uh, e-racing competition with race room then very nearly touching the concrete wall this is brilliant into the arena where already there are tens of thousands of people watching this uh, brilliant competition going on so uh, merely a, a few turns left before the conclusion of this lap currently p3 sector one was a pb sector two was a bit shabby we're within sight of the timing line now uh, it's not an improvement, unfortunately, and that might be the tyres, but there we can see an improvement, and I think it was Moritz Lerner, the fastest of the rookies, who moves up into fifth position. It's a very nice lap. And by so doing, of course, that's dropped Robert Wickens down to P8, the best of our uh, DTM stars so far. P8 is uh, Robert Wickens. Edo Mortara is uh, P9. Lucas Auer, what's happened to him? Uh, in free practice, looked really, really good. He's currently uh, P12. And uh, on board with Edo Mortara right now, then. Actually, going on board with Lucas Auer now. Oh, I'm sorry. And I'm surprised. I'm surprised because Mortara just said he, he hasn't even built his rig. And Lucas Auer, he drove in the last race. He did a very good job, finished in the points. and been beaten by his teammates so yeah maybe some work to do but this is still the 13th position so no improvements inside and that curve he took it a little bit hard there come on lucas so at the moment then lucas uh, is uh, p13 as I mentioned, the best of our uh, DTM stars, uh, Robert Wickens, who's uh, P8. Uh, Tim Heineman, uh, we uh, track once again now. Uh, sector one, not the best we've seen from him at the moment, of course, he is uh, top of that uh, chart a 132.055 Gately P2 then who's just uh, on uh, some 8 100s uh, down then it's uh, Julian Kunze who's done a best of everyone through sector 1 BB through sector 2 this could be a good lap Rob yeah it could be but he's still a little bit further behind to the uh, to the time of Jack Keithley so I'm not sure if it's an improvement and it is an improvement but it's not good enough so, unfortunately, Julian Kunz is still in third position, but a very nice time, and we shouldn't count him out for the race. Kevin Sigge Revanek, actually, the Austrian driver, currently in fourth position. He's also one of the e-racers, one of the strong performers of the season. Then Moritz Lerner and Florian Hasse. He's currently in sixth position. So Florian Hasser then that we are uh, tracking right now, PB through uh, Sector 1. Like in uh, the DTM racing right across we've seen in the season, the margins between P1, P10 and then uh, back down to P18, they're tiny actually and credit should be given to these uh, um, uh, race room drivers who are, you know, they are all so on top of their game, aren't they? Brilliant drivers in their own right and as Torre said, great to see them in a real racing car. Yeah, and what you have to imagine, of course, is that when they drive at home, when they drive online, they've all got different equipment. They've all got different types of wheels, different types of chairs and so on. And here they're all driving on equal equipment and they all had to adjust to a whole new technology maybe in some cases for the brakes. So it's been a big task for them and they didn't have a lot of time. They had a 30 minute practice session to adjust here. And when I look at the time from Tim Heinemann and from Jack Keithley as well at the front of the field, these are ultra competitive times. 
on a fixed setup as well, so this is uh, really impressive. But qualifying is about to end, and uh, yeah, it's only 30 seconds left, and actually in race room, when the timer says zero, the session is over. Oh! They're done. So unlike in DTM then, if you've crossed the line with maybe one second left, you can complete that lap. That's not the case. That's not the case. Oh, no! And we've, we've actually seen someone improving, and that's Florian Hasse, who moved up into fifth position past Moritz Lerner. So nice job by him. So we are counting down then just uh, five seconds remaining in this uh, qualifying session. Uh, Kevin Siggy then that we are with right now. Uh, and that's it, qualifying done and dusted, Rob. Yeah, congratulations to Tim Heinemann. Pole position for the champion of the last year, but Jack Keefley is right on the stairs. And if you've seen them in the season, you know, there's not a lot of sympathy between them. And I think it could get very heated. <laughs> okay, so we're looking for real action yeah, in the race then. Yeah. Okay, from my point of view, clearly I want to see who is the uh, best of the uh, DTM stars. If memory serves me, I think that's probably going to be uh, Robert Wickens. Yeah, it is. Ladies nice and thing. gentlemen, boys and girls, please give it up for Robert Wickens, P9. Well done, Rob. We will actually have a look now, though, at the uh, pole position man, at Tim Heinemann. Oh, that's someone on his phone. <laughs> Don't uh, use that while you're driving. There we've got him, Tim Heinemann, winner last year, and he's waiting for the race to start. Well done, Tim. There he is. Did the hair specially for today's race. Good to see you, and many, many congratulations. A brilliant lap from Tim Heinemann. Uh, Jack Keithley then P2, and then Ziggy was P3. Yeah, exactly. So um, Julian Kunze, he looked like he would be in third position the whole time, and then he actually got beaten by Ziggy in the dying moments of no. the session. Uh, but again, this is just how uh, so real it is, isn't it? And of course, when you, have, when you have run the competition throughout the course of the season, this is how close it's been. It's not been stepped up just for the uh, f finales. It has been like it all season long, hasn't it? Yeah, exactly. So we've seen actually, uh, we've seen a lot of close fights. We've seen a lot of different drivers win races. Keithley won, uh, won five races, Heinemann won two, Kunze won a race, and also Jaroslav Honsik won a race who qualified in seventh position. And there were a lot of position changes, and I think we can expect the same here. So looking forward to the race, it's just about to start. Uh, very good. In a few uh, seconds. I think Torre is down there, who's probably going to uh, t catch up with Edo Mortara, who finished P10 in qualifying. Oh, we're moving into yeah. the race now. Oh, we, we start the race now, so let's start, let's race. Are you ready, guys? <laughs> who's going to be the winner of the Mercedes-AMG e-race competition? So we are on then and racing here at Hockenheim in this uh, race room uh, competition. And uh, all bets on then as the cars are heading up uh, through turn number one towards uh, turn number two. This is going to be phenomenal. Of course, we have two brilliant DTM races to come this weekend, but the first of those is actually this race. We said it was going to be packed around the Parabolica as they all head up towards the uh, hairpin. Let's go on board. What a phenomenal shot this is of uh, Julian Kunzer then uh, being chased down here, trying to find the perfect line going into the uh, hairpin. Up the inside, is there contact? No. Do all the cars get through cleanly? Remarkably, Rob, I think they have. Oh, there's one spinner, and I think that's Mauro Engel control of this car but otherwise a remarkably clean start and Tim Heinemann he won the start and he's already over a second ahead of the next driver and that's not Jack Keefley that's Kevin Siggy Remanak who got past Jack Keefley at the start of the race so Kevin Siggy then is uh, P2 but Heinemann then he did all the hard work arguably in qualifying put the car on pole position and now he is leading that race and as you say has built up a remarkable lead before even one lap has been completed uh, Jack Keefley down there in P3 at the moment and he'll be uh, hoping over the course of this race to try and uh, make up places. Oh. Julian Kunza, whoa, that's that a big Hunsik. bold. That was Hunsik against Hasse and Hunsik is going past on the inside. Quite an aggressive move but an opportunistic move and that's what we like to see here. What they say is Rubin is racing and that was Rubin and racing and brilliant to watch. Yeah, the Czech driver Jaroslav Honsik, not the best qualifying session. Oh, we have to go to Keithley though, because Keithley is putting a lot of pressure on Kevin Siggy Revenak. And He's right on him, isn't he? He's yeah. right on him here. And he should have the DRS now as well. So Jack Keithley then with the DRS benefit should make this really easy around the Parabolica then, heading up towards the hairpin. But, but, if 
Vegan Keep? No, Keatley's got it done even before they get to the hairpin. But now, of course, that gives uh, DRS to Ziggy as well. So for up to three times per lap, the DRS can be used. So what Keatley needs to do now oh, as we get more around. Ahead. And I think it's Julian Kunzu who got spun around in the hairpin. And now we can see the DTM drivers in the battle. Wickens into seventh. Watara in eighth, and they're side by side. Ooh, crucial point there. We shouldn't go side by side, and there comes the dive from Wickens. Oh. <laughs> Pushes Motara a little bit out of the way. Actually gives the position to Schoenfelder as well, who moves up into eighth position. Well, of course, he was just waiting to pounce, wasn't he? Yeah. As those two started battling between themselves, oh, inevitably he was going to be able to take saw, advantage. Now side by side once again here, Matzik is looking now on the inside of Kunze, who really dropped back. A lot of bad luck for Julian Kunze there early on in the race. So now he has to recover through his race. So slightly banked around there, um, and let's complete this lap then with uh, Tim Heinemann then, as he crosses the timing line now. Keep your eyes on Jack Keatley though in P2. We've already seen him overtake one car. Can he get on terms with the race leader, Tim Heinemann then? Uh, we have uh, 16 and uh, three quarter minutes left of this race. And Tim Heinemann has done a good job in terms of building a gap, but that can oh so easily be taken away. Yeah, and what we saw in the whole season was that Tim Heinemann is very fast in the beginning of the race, but when it comes to tire wear, he's suffering a little bit, and Jack Keefe is a master of tire wear. So this race is all but over. And of course, like in a real race, tire wear, tire degradation is utterly critical. So they break us now, Italy under a bit of uh, pressure now. So instead of uh, focusing on attack, he's having to focus on defending now. This is a brilliant shot. Kevin Siggy Revenak then absolutely hounding. Takes a look at the outside, tries to unsettle Jack ahead. Will try and uh, move towards the inside now, but wherever uh, Siggy wants to put that car, he knows that he's going to be not blocked, but it's going to be heavily defended by Jack Kidley ahead of him in uh, P2. But this is the real battle at the moment but for, between these two for P2 and P3. Actually, P4 and P5, that's almost as close. We've got Hassel and we've got Lerner, the fastest of the rookies. He's putting all sorts of pressure on Florian Hassel. You're absolutely right. I'm glad we're picked up on this battle because it's every bit as exciting, yeah. isn't it? Florian Hassel then, who's having to stick his elbows out and try and make the car considerably wider than it is to try and prevent that overtake. Yeah, no, of course, on the next lap, Lerner should have the DRS, and that was also a small mistake by Florian Hassel, who got a little bit onto the grass. Now see here the first corner, that's a crucial corner, and the force feedback is so hard when they go over the curb there, it really shakes your arms around, and so it's, it's one of the corners where you can, you can lose a lot of times, and you can also easily lose the car when you hit the curb at the wrong angle. Now this will be absolutely critical, you can see the DRS engaged then, of course this gives the additional benefit around this uh, Parabolica then, heading up towards the heavy braking zone, which is the hairpin, and let's see, is he going to go outside, inside, inside, trying to defend now. But we'll try and get the uh, switch back now by uh, undercutting and trying to get underneath the car. Ah, not just quite close enough. No, not quite close enough, but he still is on the DRS. So maybe this time here, this corner is really difficult with the DRS open. You don't have a lot of downforce. Goes for the outside line and I don't think he can make a pass. Nope, doesn't look like it. Well, it was a valiant effort, wasn't it? Yeah, but we have to go to the front of the field because Jack Heathley, he's already closed the gap to Tim Heinemann and that went a little bit quicker than I expected. It's 14 minutes still left on the clock and we haven't seen that sort of pace from Jack Heathley online, but he's certainly on shape here at the live event. So Jack Heathley then chasing down uh, Heinemann then, who is our race leader. And now as they come into the start finish straight here, heading up towards a turn at number one, you can see just how close and you're absolutely right, Rob. He's really narrowed that gap down. So all of a sudden, Heinemann is having to think about where he has to put that car in terms of defense. And uh, Jack Keatley then. Oh, I think Heinemann has got an issue. I think you're right. I think he's got an issue because you could see his car swerving from one side oh. to another. So a little bit of contact there, but Heinemann looks wounded. It looks like his car, maybe like the steering broke at the front or so, because he's moving from one side to another and he can't do anything here against Keatley. But Sigi Revanak. He's going for the lead now, going through the middle there. Three abreast. This is incredible up towards the hairpin, trying to scrub off speed. Oh, and contact, and keep this Oh, my 
goodness. Well, this is our race leader, of course. Uh, Jack Heatley got turned around in that. He has recovered and is back out on track. But, oh, goodness, we, we kind of thought it might happen, yeah. didn't we? Yeah, and I don't know which one was it, with, and if it was Heinemann or if it was Siggy Remanak, but one of the BWT cars was too late on the brakes, just spins Keithley around, and now he's seven seconds back. And that's almost an impossible task now for the for the win of the race. It yep. is with only 12 and a half minutes yeah. remaining, isn't it? I mean, that's an enormous margin. So our leader then is uh, Kevin Sigi Rebenak, then in uh, P1. And, uh, well, gifted a uh, great opportunity there. But just keep your eyes on Heinemann now, because I think the bit is between Heinemann's teeth now. And he's going to try and chase down and get that, wrestle away that P1 position back again. Actually, take a look here on board with Tim Heinemann because we could see his car moving a little bit. Oh, he misses the corner as well there, out of the corner. So I'm not sure what's the problem with his car, but he seems to have recovered pretty well. That seems remarkable because you're right. And you picked up on it much quicker than I did that there was an issue with the car. But all of a sudden, the issue seems to, A, either have gone away or he's driving through it, which if he is driving through that issue, that makes his performance now even more remarkable. With DRS open, let's see as he tries to find a way side by side and he's squeezing him there that's very aggressive racing from Tim Heinemann here now this is where you can get that to switch back and go underneath and Heinemann still has the DRS though so on this lap it won't be possible unfortunately Hassel moves up into third position so if these two make contact here Florian Hassel will be the one who benefits well, let's see then as uh, we follow these two. This is the race for P1 and P2 at the moment with uh, merely 11 and a quarter minutes of this race remaining. Uh, Robert Wickens then, the uh, best of the uh, DTM stars, who is currently running P9 ahead of Lucas Auer. Uh, Edo Mortara is P12, Gary Paffett P14, uh, Paul De Resta and Maro Engel P17 and P18 respectively. Yeah, lots of problems for Mauro Engel in this race, but maybe he can gain a few positions. We actually have to go back to the front though, because Kevin oh. Singh Remanak, he's still close to Tim Heinemann. So Kevin Singh Remanak then, uh, doing the uh, chasing now. And uh, Keithley up to P5, but uh, some uh, seven and a bit seconds down. That's a huge margin for him to uh, come back from. Uh, but that's racing, isn't it? Contact happens and things happen. And uh, sure enough, it happened to him. So again, on the Parabolica, DRS in uh, full use then from uh, Kevin Sigi. Up towards the uh, hairpin now. Which line? Outside, inside. Whoa, carrying so much speed. Never going to be able to scrub that off. Yeah, a bit too late on the brakes, but he's got a good run for the next corner, and he's got the DRS, so I think this might actually help him in the long run. Next thing said, oh, he's braking. Why is he braking? <laughs> I don't understand that. Well, uh, Kel Surprise, uh, mate, if it was me, I'd be braking. But these guys are so, so good. Uh, this uh, driving, it was a surprise to see him uh, break in. We look back, what a brilliant uh, camera angle this is. Uh, looking back at the uh, P2 car on board with uh, Tim Heinemann, then rubbing across those uh, rumble strips using every single centimeter of tarmac that is available to get the most out of these cars. And of course, as we reach just nine minutes of the time remaining, tire degradation may come into play here, Rob. Yeah. Yeah, definitely could come into play and of course it's always a bit more difficult for the guy who's leading the race. It's always a bit easier for the car behind because you have the slipstream, you have the DRS, you don't have to push so hard through the corners. And Tim Heinemann way out of the circuit here in the corner, actually gaining a lot of time there by taking this line. I think he's strong on brakes. He is, he's king of the late breakers, isn't he? Yeah, we can see him in the picture now, that's Kevin Sigurema back there, looking very focused, very concentrated. Now Tim Heinemann, yeah, you can see the sweat dripping from his forehead there. As Kevin C is coming up now. Oh, oh, this is gonna be good. It's closing the door late again. Oh. So as they head up towards the uh, hairpin, who's gonna come out of this P1? There's contact between the two of them, but no damage done as they head now down towards the next turn. Uh, once again, Heinemann taking a few liberties here in the hairpin. So Ziggy, I don't know how long he will keep his patience here in the battle. So it's at this point then, uh, frustrations begin to come in as well. And uh, so this is uh, Marcus Schoenfelder then. 
who is uh, currently running in uh, P8 with Kunze ahead of him. Of course, uh, just ahead of uh, Robert ahead of him. Of course, uh, just ahead of Wickens, who is running in uh, P9. The best of our uh, DTM drivers with uh, Lucas Howe running in uh, P10. So there is uh, Lucas Howe then. The, uh, oh, uh, that's uh, not the circuit. Uh, yes, I uh, don't know quite where he was going there. Um, uh, the Austrian then still with mathematical chance, of course, of uh, being able to take it across the weekend. This is Lucas Au then uh, running in uh, P10 through that uh, banked section, uh, back on the power. And Tim Heinemann here off the track once again in the first corner. Of course, you have to stay on the curb and in order to stay on the racing line, so he's really pushing it a little bit. Kevin Siegi, he's also pushing it, and that's on the brakes. So he loses all of the good run that he had earlier on to stay close to Heinemann and now he might have had an opportunity to take the lead but that's gone. Yes. Uh, just explain to me Rob if you will because track limits when it comes to uh, DTM racing of course two wheels outside the white line is acceptable four wheels isn't. It's marginally different isn't it in our competition here. Yeah. In the first corner you can go with all the four wheels onto the curb and in uh, most of the other corners you can go with two wheels onto the curb and two wheels beyond that. But the lines that some of the drivers were taking, like Lucas Auer before, they were not quite, no, not the quite. Track limits. But either way, Tim Heinemann, he hasn't had a lot uh, of time here alone at the, at the front of the field because Kevin Sigurimanak has closed the gap immediately. He has, and that's an extraordinary re recovery because uh, Heinemann had got uh, some distance up the road, but uh, just keep your eyes on the uh, P2 driver now who uh, really is just closing Kevin Sigi Rebenak then around the uh, bank section of that uh, turn, gets within two car lengths of uh, Heinemann who is uh, leading the race. Six minutes remaining, that's all. The time has gone so, so quickly, but I'm sure you'll agree with me. Every single second of it has been entertaining thus far with some really close racing. And what should also be pointed out is how these two have broken away from the rest of the pack. Yeah, here we can see the guy in third place. That's Moritz Werner, who's doing a great job here. But, uh, yeah, it's over five seconds, the gap at the front of the field, so that's a lot. That is a lot, a remarkable margin to have been built by our uh, P1 and uh, P2 uh, drivers. And here once again is uh, Kevin Siggy Rebenak then, who is uh, reeling in Tim Heinemann, heading up once again towards the hairpin. Again, DRS open, choice is inside, outside. Chooses to go outside, will try and get underneath now, but really actually wasn't close enough to be able to do so. I wonder if Siggy Rebenak is finding his time. I wonder if he's waiting for the last lap to make a move on the DRS. We would call that a last lap lunge. Do you think that's likely to come? It might be because he's a very patient guy and it's not, you know, you could see him actually tapping the brakes when he was coming up to Heinemann. So maybe he's just waiting here. Maybe he doesn't want to risk being in front and then being overtaken once again by Heinemann. So what we're suggesting is that uh, Kevin Sibi, Ziggy Rebenak then may be just biding his time and keeping the pressure on Heinemann, but the real pressure is going to come when we're running out of time and when we're into the last lap situation. That's when the uh, real potential overtake may come. Well, Kunze actually here in a close battle with Keefley, who dropped way down the order, and Daniel Schoen, who's, uh, or Markus Schoenfelder actually, who's in the middle of them. So Kunze back up to six, and Keefley, it's gone from bad to worse for him. He's having a torrid time of it, isn't yeah. he, unfortunately? Uh, and all, of course, brought about by that spin around at the yeah. exit of the hairpin. And that's in the most important race of the season. He's been so good online, and at the beginning of the race, he looked fantastic. And now, you know, he's just dropping down the order. Very unfortunate. Yeah, it is a great shame, but like in the real deal race, it can happen. So uh, Tim Heinemann then has uh, broken away just a little bit here. Uh, from Ziggy, but is he just lulling him into a false sense of security, ready to pounce like a viper? Let's see, once again, he's not doing anything in the happen, so I think he's just waiting a little bit. Well, of course, you've watched these drivers all yeah. season long, so you know what some of their characteristics are and uh, what they might choose to do. Let's I can tell out. you that, that Heinemann or Keith, they would not wait. I can guarantee you that. But these two people here, they are having a good fight as well. Lerner, on the outside there, in the car with the green mirrors, and Hassel on the inside. Oh, change of positions once again, I think Hassel Ooh. should have that. Good move by Florian Hassel there, but Moritz Lerner, this isn't done yet. No, it's you're right. sideways over the curb there. So as you can see, as uh, Rob has said, they uh, certainly take liberties with regards to track limits, and also uh, liberties on occasions with the uh, panel rubbing that goes on as well. 
Uh, but this is a really uh, close battle between the two of them then. Uh, bearing in mind, this is the uh, battle going on, P3, P4. Oh, oh, I just thought we see someone moving up, but it was not the case. But we actually have to go back to the front of the field because it's only 2 minutes and 45 seconds left. Oh. And I think now Kevin really has to think about making a move because otherwise he's... He's going to run out of time, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Kevin Sigi Rebenak then. He has got to get it together now. It's got to be this lap or the next one, otherwise he is going to run out of time here. So DRS in uh, full use, heading up towards the hairpin now. This does look more aggressive. This looks more like he means business now. He moves up even before we get to the hairpin. Of course, what he's got to do is scrub off the speed and make sure that car is as wide as possible to prevent Heinemann Oh, Heinemann back. taps him again out of the hairpin there. Heinemann really has to watch out there. But Ziggy did a brilliant job. Yeah. He put that car right in the middle of the road. He stuck his elbows out and said, ta-da, chap, P1 is mine now. Yeah, and now, of course, for the last two laps of the race, the DRS will go to Tim Heinemann, unless Kevin Ziggy Revener can pull off a miracle here in the last sector. We can see two cars side by side in the background. That was Schoenfelder on the outside against Kunze. And Schoenfelder, one of the rookies, having a fantastic race here. He's been impressive all race long, hasn't yeah. he? Really impressive been really impressive and I think it hasn't worked for Kevin Siggy Rebenak because Tim Heinemann is still right there. You can see him on the screen here, Tim Heinemann, waiting to make his revenge move. And this will be the last lap. Oh. We're going to go onto the last lap now on this lap. So we've got one lap left and that means Tim Heinemann has DRS for the last lap of the race. Did, did Rebenak come into it too early? Did he make the overtake one lap too soon as Heinemann is going to fight back here? Takes the lead of the race, but he taps the curve way too hard there. So that might give an opportunity to Kevin Sigurevanak. Now he has to stay in the slipstream, but that would be very hard without the DRS. They are virtually welded together, so it's going to be everything or nothing going into the hairpin then as they make their way around the parabolica heading up towards the hairpin now. This camera shot shows that Tim Heinemann then... Oh, Heinemann breaks a little bit too late. This might give an opportunity to Kevin Ziggy, but he's good on the exit and he still has the DRS. So now Kevin Ziggy Revenak needs a miracle in the last sector to take the win of the race. And you and I both know it's really difficult to overtake in that yeah. last sector. I just wonder whether Ziggy just, he overtook one lap too yeah. early, maybe. Uh, it's easy for you and I to sit up yeah. here and suggest that we know best. This has been a real race-long battle which has enthralled and entertained. But at the moment, it looks like Tim Heinemann, barring any disaster, is going to bring the honours home in P1. He has just a couple of turns left to do. So Tim Heinemann, then Ziggy P2. Rob, who's going to win the race? Yeah, it's going to be Tim Heinemann who will cross the line first here. Certainly not an uncontroversial win, but he will take the win here. Tim Heinemann wins the race ahead of Kevin Siggy Revenak. Oh, something happened there. I saw a car flying. Boris Lerner actually takes the third position. Now we can see some, some discussions there between the staff member and Tim Heinemann. I think the results are still provisional now as some of the scenes are going to be reviewed. I assume that's going to work what's happening right now at the moment. Well, what we can say is that the uh, best of the DTM drivers, Rob Wickens, then in uh, P9. Give it up for Robert Wickens, P9, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Great effort, Rob. Well done. Yeah, great job by him. And he, he stayed ahead of Lucas Auer. He stayed ahead Only of just. the guy who... Yeah, he can see Lucas Auer there in the background, I think. Just a bit of bubble gum on the throttle. That would have done it, Lucas, wouldn't it? That would have been enough. That would have been enough. Excellent. Uh, what a fantastic race. So uh, uh, we will see then the P1, 2, uh, 3. I, I have to say, Rob, where the heck did the time go? Because yeah. there were so many battles, and it wasn't just the battle at the front. I mean, P1, 2, and actually 1, 2, 3 had broken away initially. But wherever we looked down the grid, there was battles going on. It was fantastic entertainment. Credit to all of them. Yeah, fantastic race. Great job here. And... Um yeah, congratulations to the drivers. We've got the results coming up pretty soon. So Heinemann won ahead of Revenak, then Löhner, Hassel in fourth, Honsik in fifth, then Julian Kunze, Jack Kiefli only in seventh position after the contact with, with Heinemann, then Schoenfelder in eighth, Robert Wickens in ninth position, but Lukas Auer in tenth, 
And who's that in 11th? I think that's Philip Matzik, one of the rookies. Then Daniel Schön in 12th. 13th position goes to... Who's that in the 13th position? That's Eduardo Mortara. Edo Mortara. Oh, he dropped down the order. I expected him a little bit higher up after his good start of the race. And there we can see the full results. So confirmation of the results then. P1, Tim Heineman. P2, Kevin Siggy Rebenak. Uh, it's Moritz Lerner then. P3, Florian Hasser taking uh, P4. The rest of the order there. And as you can see, uh, for our DTM stars, mixed throughout the uh, race order. P last, though, was uh, Mauro Engel, who uh, Tori will be uh, speaking to in a few moments. Uh, no Christmas card for me this year from the Engel household, I think. Um, <laughs> but uh, P1, a brilliant, brilliant race. Really enjoyable. Uh, great to sit alongside you and commentate. Oh, it's been a pleasure. It's been great. And uh, I hope we can see a lot of these events once again in the future. I think this is just the start of something here. Well, I have to say, the whole race room setup is magnificent. And uh, it's not only uh, magnificent for us to enjoy, but fascinating uh, to actually watch all the technology at work here. Brilliant job. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Dave. And before we celebrate the fastest e-racer, we celebrate the slowest racer, e-racer. Maro, what's, what's wrong with your simulator here? Oh, were you with you? Yeah, I don't think it was the simulator. Um, I'm really happy that that race is over and uh, I can go back to reality because I think uh, after five, I think counting five spins, I lost count after that. I stopped counting. Um, <laughs> yeah. So you're not your simulator guy? Not really, no. Um, congratulations to, uh, to the winners. Um, it's, it's difficult, it's not easy, um, but uh, certainly it can be easier than I made it for myself today. <laughs> So uh, we wish you more luck for the race weekend here on the Hockenheim Ring. Perhaps it was a little bit of extra training. So you're, you're going to buy a simulator or not? Uh, unfortunately, no time for simulator at the moment. Uh, plenty of real racing. So um, I'll, I'll stay focused on that because I feel that I'm a little bit better in real racing than <laughs> yeah, in the are. simulator. <laughs> okay, Maru, thank you so much. So, and now we're going to celebrate the fastest races. And here they are. Thank you so much. So, we go on stage and we come to the victory ceremony. And where are Dave and Robert? You both. What a race. This is like real racing. What do you think, Dave? Because you saw so many real races on the real racetrack, but this is your second e-racing, right? Do you know what, Tor? I was really, really impressed last year. And I thought I'm going to struggle to be even more impressed. But I think this year I was. Because it's the sheer skill and dedication that these, uh, these racers bring to this. And let's be truthful. When you're up against some of the best racing drivers in the world, the Mercedes AMG DTM stars, I tell you what, absolutely brilliant. And whether you're a rookie or whether you've been uh, in the championship throughout the year, you do deserve so much credit because these guys are brilliant. Of course. Uh, applause for them, please. So what do you think, Robert, of your new commentator here <laughs> and of the race? Because you are the e-racing pro. Shall I get my coat? <laughs> oh, man, it's been great. It's been my first opportunity to comment on such a race, on, on, on such a big stage. And it's been a fantastic experience also to share this passion for the sim racing, for the e-racing with everyone here, with the big stage, with the Mercedes DTM drivers. And I hope we will see this a few more times in the future. Hopefully. But uh, I have the official re results, so now we're going to celebrate the drivers of today. So thank you so much and applause for them, please. So now really with you, buddy. Well, we start the victory ceremony and here are the official uh, results and we start with uh, the mercedes amg motorsport games world rookie competition the winner gets a, a dtm taxi drive here on the hockenheim ring and this is really great i did it before and i loved it so the winner is you all know but now you give a give big applause for Moritz Lena, please. Congratulations. Okay. Thank you. How does it feel? There's uh, your camera. Okay, um, it feels great. It was a great battle against Florian. Uh, had a lot of fun and a P3 at the end is very nice. Yeah, and uh, are you looking forward to your prize? You know what it is? Yeah, of course, the taxi ride. It's uh, what I ever dreamed of. Uh, every day, um, every weekend, I'm at a, a race weekend. I see people go, um, given taxi drives, and I, oh, um, everyone, um, everyone wants it. 
and I can do it now, so I'm very excited for tomorrow. I wish you, uh, yeah, good luck, because do you have a, a COTS tutor? Uh, no. <laughs> Hopefully you don't need it. So congratulations for you. Here is your prize from Robert. Yeah, your applause. Yeah! We don't have a podium, sorry, and we don't have sh uh, champagne because it's too dangerous for the simulators. So this is your party. Party hard and uh, good. Have fun tomorrow in the ca taxi. Yeah, thank you. Moritz, thank you so much. Moritz Lerner. And now we come to, yeah, to the Royal League. They... Yeah, they fought really hard for this day. They spent so many hours on the simulators. They, uh, yeah, they ate so much junk food <laughs> for today and they prepared hard. And now it's their ceremony. And we don't have music for this. Like... We start with P3. Are you all ready for the ceremony? Perfect. We start with P3, and um, the price is a three-stage AMG Driving Academy racetrack training in real life, not uh, in e-life. So, on P3 is Florian Asse. Glückwunsch! Congratulations. How does it feel? Was it a hard race for you? Very good. It feels very good. Tough, t tough race against Moritz Lerner. And I had to, to take care that Jaroslav Hansek isn't, isn't come close to us. And 20 minute fight, so it's all good. Are you looking forward to your prize? Have you ever been on a real racetrack? No, I've never been yet. You will, with the Driving Academy. This is going to be really fun. So, congratulations for you, applause for you, and this is your prize over there. And we don't have a, a podium, but we have stairs. So this is the third place <laughs> down there. So, second place. Hey, oh no, here it, we have a podium, to be honest. This is a podium. This is the third place, second place, first place. Oh, you can stand or sit if you want. Yeah. Eraser, you know. Okay, P2. Kevin Sigi Rebarak aus Österreich. Sein Vorbild. Da ist ja deine Kamera. Herzlichen Glückwunsch. Thank you. Thank you. How does it feel? Uh, it feels, feels pretty good. I mean, I'm very honored to be here and I'm very satisfied with uh, the position I've been in, so which is P2. I mean, I could have done a little better and I think some of them could have played a little bit fair, but in the end it's P2. I mean, I'm not going to complain much. It was a hard fight with Tim, right? Yeah, it was a very hard fight, but in the end, I was trying to kind of catch up to him, but couldn't in the DRS zone because um, he, he got away in turn one. I don't know how, but uh, he still managed to like pull, pull away in turn one for like four tenths, but I could, couldn't catch him in the DRS zone. So, there's racing. But P2, congratulations. Your prize, you know what it is? It's a two-stage uh, racetrack uh, driving with the Driving Academy. And um, I wish you good luck and... Much fun with it. Thank you very much. So, you go on the second place on the podium. So this is three, two, and now, <laughs> that works not really good with our podium. So next year we're gonna have a podium. So now we celebrate the world champion of this championship. Big applause for the winner of the Mercedes AMG Motorsport E-Racing competition. A big applause for Tim Heinemann. Congratulations. Thank you very much. How was the race? Uh, very difficult. I mean, my qualifying was pretty good with uh, place one. So, yeah, I started with one second ahead of the second place. And um, yeah, in the middle of the race, my, my wheel went off, so I had no feeling in the wheel. So that made it uh, very difficult, but yeah. Somehow it's I like in a real race. Sometimes you have problems with your car, sometimes not. And so you did it. You're the first. Your applause. Thank you very much. And you're going to get a three-stage racetrack training. Here's your prize from Gary Peffert. 
And um, you are going to be on a uh, on a real racetrack, and you're going to get a, a real um, yeah a coach, a professional race driver. Have you ever been on a racetrack before? Yeah, actually, I won last year, so I was in Imola this year with AMG Academy. Ah, of course, yeah. Yeah, and uh, was driving the AMG GTR, and I can recommend it to to everyone. So. Yeah, looking forward to another time with AMG Academy. Yeah, perhaps you get uh, this guy. <laughs> you, you're going to do the training? No, you don't. Uh, maybe not. I'm a bit busy. Perhaps uh, Mero. Mero will do it. Um, if he wants to, where it is? Is he, is he already gone? No, Mero, perhaps you do the training and you can give him some simulator training. Yeah, so applause for you, Tim Heinemann. So please. Yeah, you. you we don't have champagne, I told before, because we, uh, we're a little afraid of the simulators. But now, please, all winners on stage, all drivers, please, for a photo. All drivers and all winners. That was a great competition. I hope you had fun. Did you have fun, Gary? No. No? You're not a simulator guy as well, right? The last few laps, I'd given up, and I was watching the TV, watching the race at the front, so it wasn't going too well. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, it was good. That's what we do in our race cars, is watch TV when we're driving around. Yeah, yeah, of course, good. Hopefully not this weekend. So, this is going to be uh, the picture. And I... Oh, so many race drivers and so many e-racing drivers. So, one, <laughs> this is not only photo, we have video as well. So. Celebrate the winners of the e-racing competition, please. Here are the winners. <laughs> so we found you, the winners of the e-racing competition. And uh, this weekend, we're going to find a new DTM champion. We wish you, our race drivers, all the best. Good luck. And uh, uh, perhaps next year, you're going to do something with the simulator. We, we, we will see. So thank you to you, everyone at home. And thank you. Now we're going to celebrate. See you next year.